Hello and welcome to Projector, and on this episode, Sydney Sweeney's nun might be giving birth to the second coming, or something nightmarish in Immaculate. Sister Cecilia, played by Sydney Sweeney, has moved to a remote convent in Italy after an invite from Father Sal Tedeschi, played by Alvaro Morte. Soon after arriving, Cecilia finds herself mysteriously pregnant, and having not broken her vows, the convent believes it to be an immaculate conception. But Cecilia begins to fear not just the convent, but that whatever is inside of her may not be a blessing from God. Immaculate is a reteaming of Sydney Sweeney and director Michael Mohan, who previously worked together on the Amazon film The Voyeurs a few years ago, and Sweeney is definitely having her moment right now. She's the bona fide it girl. Ever since she came to prominence on Euphoria a few years ago, she's been tiffed for stardom in the same way their co-star Zendaya has, and that seems to be happening right now, launched by success of the rom-com Anyone But You, which was a big sleeper hit over Christmas, and reminded everyone just how fun that kind of movie can be with two very well cast leads, and Sweeney showed good comic chops in that. Since then, we've had Madame Webb, which were largely going to sweep under the carpet, although the best thing you can say about that is that she wasn't the worst thing in it, although I think it does prove that she's past the point where she can convincingly play high schoolers now. I do think, though, that Immaculate is an attempt to cement her as a scream queen, and Sweeney is no stranger to the horror genre. In fact, you look at her CV before Euphora, she's appeared in plenty of independent horror movies. Think of things like Spiders 3D and and the like. So she's very much an old hand at this, despite the fact this is her first star vehicle in the genre. And I do think that it proves that Sweeney does have what it takes to potentially become a new queen in the horror genre. And Sweeney is undoubtedly centre stage in this movie. She's in pretty much every single scene outside the pre-title sequence. As Cecilia comes to Italy extremely wide-eyed and naive, she doesn't speak a word of Italian, so immediately that marks her as being an outsider. People look at her strangely in the convent, at first just simply because she's an American, but she's very sincere about her faith. The reason that she became a nun is because she had a near-death experience she fell through a frozen lake and became trapped under the ice and was technically dead for seven minutes before being revived. And she believes this is part of God's purpose. The reason that she was resurrected is because she needs to commit herself to his will. This is despite the fact that she is rather sheepish in herself, especially when dealing with the day-to-day -day tasks of the convent, be it the elderly who are often dealing with mental instability or the fact that she's also called upon to behead chickens, and in one moment she very sheepishly backs out of taking an axe to a chicken's head. Early on a character calls her nice! and she doesn't mean that as a compliment. Cecilia is very quickly going to have to harden herself to the environment of the convent, especially once she realises what she's actually let herself in for. And Sweeney spends a lot of the movie channeling her inner Mia Farrow. The movie is undoubtedly a riff on Rosemary's Baby, except this time set in a convent. So Sweeney spends a lot of the movie called upon to be photogenically tortured, if not literally some of the time, at least emotionally most of the time. You can tell the anguish on her face, and especially as she becomes increasingly uncertain about her beliefs, as she comes to realise that she's not in a house of God, she's in a house of evil. So there's actually quite a bit of subtle act here from Sweeney, but of course the moments that most of the audience will take away are the ones that Sweeney is very well known for at this point. Sweeney was well known on Euphoria for her character's big emotional dramatic outbursts. She's an expert at screaming and crying, and Immaculate often calls upon her to do that, often smothered in blood. And Sweeney definitely has the credentials of being a scream queen because she's got the screaming part down undoubtedly. I do have to admit that I'm not usually a fan of the non-sploitation subgenre as it's come to be known. I mean, horses for courses and all that, but my idea of a fun horror movie is not people being tortured for two straight hours. And I'm looking at you, Saint Agatha. I think what I don't usually like about these kind of movies is they just feel so absolutely depressing to watch. It's literally just 
torture, 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 with a side ordering of helplessness and despair. And I think Immaculate elevates itself beyond that, largely because of the way that Cecilia is both written and performed. Sweeney elevates up this material, largely because the character actually has some agency. Once she realises that something is very, very wrong, and this is most definitely not normal, she's the first to try and bolt for the exit as quickly as possible. Cecilia commits to multiple escape attempts, and her character becomes more and more resilient over the course of the movie. She actually becomes quite hardened by the end of it, and doing things that at the start of it, she was very reluctant to do, and later on, she will do anything to try and get herself out of this place. That makes for a far more interesting character and makes for one that we can actively root for as opposed to one that simply passively suffers. And there are scenes where Sweeney does have to do that, but most of the time her character is actively fighting for her own survival. If there is a faith in this movie, it's most definitely not in God, but merely in her ability to try and fight for her own survival. That belief is what powers her over the course of the movie increasingly, not that of her own religion. But aside from Sweeney, characterization is very thin on the ground here. There are two other nuns that Cecilia interacts with. One of them, played by Benedetta Pocaroli, sees her as being a rival, she's immediately hostile towards her and sees her as some kind of threat, although it's not immediately obvious why that is at first. And another one, played by Samara Tabasco, is one that she befriends. She's extremely outspoken, surprisingly so, for being a nun. You get the sense that this convent attracts kind of misfits and lost souls in its own way, but both of these characters are initially introduced, and as soon as they start getting interesting, they're shuttled off out of the narrative. And I know that horror movies have to isolate the main character, to, but honestly, it would have been better to flesh out some of these a little more, and unfortunately, they come across as extremely underwritten, a pattern which goes for all of the movie, in matter of fact. However, what often elevates the movie is that it looks fantastic. The cinematographer here is Alicia Christian, who previously worked on the aforementioned Voyeurs, so that's yet another re-teaming. He also did the cinematography for The Night House, and he makes this movie look beautiful. He makes fantastic use of the classic architecture of many of the locations, and often the cinematography is very strikingly evocative of religious paintings, especially that moment that you've seen in the trailers where Cecilia looks like the Virgin Mary, but deeply disturbed by it and the weight of the responsibility on her. Of course, it also helps that you have someone as photogenic as Sidney Sweeney in that moment, who could easily be a muse in a painting, but certainly it's one moment in the movie that reminded me at several points of something like Midsummer. You definitely get that Ari Aster vibe. You can clearly tell that they've taken influence from that movie. That's a comparison that I'm going to swing back round to in a little bit, but there are other moments where she's running around in the fields and she's covered in blood over her nightgown, and again, that looks like a moment that could have easily escaped out of that movie. Even so, there is a great gothic look to much of Immaculate, especially in one particular sequence where Sweeney is in her nightgown holding a candle wandering around in the middle of the night, and she looks like a classic gothic horror heroine. It's very striking visually, and I think that it makes this movie so much better because it's clearly been done with a lot of craft. The movie plays around with light and especially dark, especially late in the film during a chase in the catacombs, which in many other movies could have potentially been too dark to see, but the movie plays around with that flickering of the torch in a very playful way. I do have to admit that Immaculate is a very efficient scare machine. It knows exactly what it's doing and keeps them coming at regular intervals, often in the form of jump moments that are loud enough to rattle your feelings. And yeah, some of these are actually quite cheap. I'm talking about moments where birds suddenly slam themselves into windows at very high decibels. And yeah, that is a very easy way of building tension, but it also works. It definitely keeps the audience on the edge of their seat. It builds a sense of uneasiness in the convent as we wander around it alongside 
Cecilia as we try to psych ourselves up and steal ourselves for the next Joe. And of course, we've got the usual nightmarish dream sequences that might not actually be dream sequences, although one of those needs to be to the attention of epileptic viewers because there's lots of red flashes there that will definitely cause problems for them. In addition to those, there is also bursts of sudden, shocking, gory violence. Immaculate has a real nasty streak to it at points. For example, there's a moment where a woman falls from the top of a building and she lands square on her face, and you better believe that you're going to see the aftermath of that. Another moment which very much reminded me of Midsummer. There are moments where it gets very, very graphic. I'm talking about bones breaking, faces being caved in, that sort of moment. And that really gives Immaculate a very, very bloody jolt above much of the horror competition. It definitely knows how to just push the audience's boundaries and shock them. I do think some of Sweeney's younger fans might be surprised just how hard the horror in this movie goes and need to prepare themselves. That being said, there is definitely an undercurrent of dark humour running throughout the movie, which takes the edge off of some of it, especially as the Possing reveals itself as being more bizarre and absurd with each passing minute. This is the kind of movie that literally has a nail from Jesus' crucifixion as a major plot point. In fact, I think it's a Chekhov's gun, which is even more impressive. Later on in the movie, Sweeney is doing her full horror harrowing thing and she's fighting against the bad guys whilst also being deep in the throes of labour, which is absolutely ridiculous, and the movie knows it. I'm pretty sure that's a physical impossibility, because while I'm certain I'm never going to have to go through that, I know plenty of people who have, and I can assure you they're not going to be fighting anyone whilst they're in the midst of that. But nevertheless, you have this absolutely bonkers finale, and I wish that Immaculate was actually a bit more consistently like that. It's fairly reserved for about two-thirds of it, and then it reveals just how crazy and just how nutty it actually is, and it really goes into full-on exploitation flick territory, and that's probably when it's having the most fun with itself. But there's one big thing that Immaculate is missing that separates the good horror films from the great horror films, and that's substance. Horror is great as a vehicle for metaphor and themes. It's a great way of exploring ideas, and I think that's what's driven the genre's resurgence in the last decade or so. But Immaculate isn't really interested in exploring ideas. It's not interested in exploring faith, nor is it particularly interested in Cecilia's near-death experience. It just wants to provide shocks. And there's nothing particularly wrong with that, but I did think it was interesting because on a visual level, it definitely evokes a lot of those recent indie horrors. You can call it the A24 effect if you want. They don't own that though, in all honesty, but this is where I bring in the comparison to Midsummer because there's definitely a lot taken from that movie, but it feels like if you decide to watch Midsummer and decide you were going to edit it down and remove out Florence Pugh's backstory to the absolute bare minimum, just establishing it, and then just kept all the scares and all the plot, and that's it. You took out all the other stuff, you took out all the kind of artful stuff and all the other things that might be a bit challenging for more conventional fare, and just left what was mostly the more genre elements of it. That's immaculate in a nutshell. And Immaculate is entertaining, but at the end of it, after its very nastiest moment, right before it goes into credits, I felt very empty. I felt largely like it just did its thing and then didn't really leave all that much of a lasting impression other than just, mm, that was a little bit unpleasant. It's hard to really knock Immaculate because it clearly does all the things that it intends to do, namely scare the hell out of audiences and provide a vehicle for Sydney Sweeney to become a screen queen, and it does all that in just 80 odd minutes before the credits roll. That's workmanlike, to say the least. But what you won't find is anything beyond that. I mean, visually, the movie looks fantastic, but don't confuse that for death. It may fool you into thinking that there's more to this movie, but 
there really isn't. But the visual look and Sweeney elevate Immaculate along with the fact that it commits with being the nastiest, goriest version of itself, which is really striking, especially in a marketplace filled with PG-13 Blumhouse horror. We definitely need more that have edge like this one. Mostly though, it's largely forgettable aside from that, although I will be thankful for the fact that it's finally out because I can stop confusing its trailer for the one for the first Omen. If you like this review and you want to support my work, you can give me a tip at my Ko-fi page or my YouTube Super Thanks feature which is right below the video, or you can bless my Patreon where you can see my videos early among other perks including access to my Discord server and you can join YouTube memberships for similar perks, or you can simply like, share and subscribe, it all helps. Until next time, I'm Matthew. Matthew Buck, fading out.